Uh, thank you very much for coming. I'd like to talk about the data center, the network in the data center, and why I feel the data center is particularly uh, ripe territory for uh, OpenFlow to make a real difference. Um, taking a, a step back and looking at this problem from the point of view of uh, historical evolution, if you think about where layer two, layer three networks came from, you've got to rewind your brain back to late 70s, early 80s, maybe mid 80s, and think about what networks in various organizations like universities looked like then. And networking grew up as little islands of connectivity, a departmental land here, a departmental land there, people doing email, little groupware sorts of things, remote printing, file servers were like a, a new concept. Um, and in this environment, people started wanting to interconnect these networks together. These were networks run by different people in different departments, separate administrative control. Topologies are totally ad hoc. Wherever you could put a cable, you did. People adding and removing switches or devices um, without any particular protocol or procedure or necessarily planning. Um, very low performance and uptime requirements. You know, if you couldn't print, you'd complain to your administrator and eventually the network would come back up and you could print your document. You know, those sort of the, uh, the, the viewpoint. And uh, uh, in that kind of environment, Things like RIP and Spanning Tree were just fine. They enabled this sort of very ad hoc, loosely controlled, decentralized uh, um, model to do quite well. But really nothing could be farther from the modern data center than this. And uh, to a certain extent, it's going to look like I snuck onto Igor's computer and stole his presentation here because it's making a lot of the same points here. If you look in today's data center, um, highly structured topologies, very regular interconnection patterns between aggregation switches, rack top switches, distribution layer. Um, Centrally controlled, single administrative uh, entity controlling the entire network, very careful change control and testing. And again, one of Igor's points, all of the addressing of this is stored in a database somewhere. I mean, this whole question of like Mac learning, I had a customer come to me and feeling very burned by a problem in their network where a particular server had decided that it would answer ARP requests with one Mac address, but then source his traffic with a different Mac address. And so the network never learned where the first address was, yet all the other servers were sending to it using that address. All of this traffic's flooding the entire network. And he says to me, I know where my NAC addresses are. Why does my network need to learn them? And this is a very, uh, very interesting point, I think. And if you look at a lot of these dynamic uh, topology discovery protocols, it's the same kind of pattern. The network is learning on its own things that the data center operation team already knows. And this is in an environment with very demanding performance and uptime requirements. And the sorts of instabilities we've seen from the traditional layer 2-3 control plane seems like we should be able to do better. And this is the context in which, uh, here's an example of the uh, uh, topology that some of uh, Arista's customers are building, where you have a certain number, typically 4 to 16 spine switches. These are very high capacity uh, 10 gigabit ethernet switches, uh, usually operating at layer 3. Um, interconnected in a fully connected bipartite graph uh, down to a top of rack switching layer, maybe has a couple hundred switches in it, um, where the, each top of rack switch is responsible for a particular, well, rack, obviously, and uh, uh, each rack is sort of its own little IP subnet using ECMP multipath routing to, get a, to, to spread load across the spine. And this topology can sustain enormous amounts of east-west bandwidth and also be very resilient to link failure. So it's a very good topology, it's just that it's extremely regular and kind of repetitive, and it would be nice if the network knew this was the topology and could save you from the chore of trying to configure it, because in a network with 400 switches, probably 2,000 IP subnets, depending on how you do it, most of which are really tiny, 1,600 transit links, I mean, this architecture is just made to order for some kind of central control, automated provisioning, automated administration. And this, this scenario is doable with uh, today's switches. Um, but what if you need a layer two design? You try to imagine what this looks like at layer two, what you'll see is that there's really kind of no good way to do it. There's no standards-based layer two multipathing approach available today. <coughs> Trill is coming uh, at some point, yet another way of routing, uh, another dynamic discovery protocol for, again, something which is fundamentally already known, uh, at least to the network administrators. Um, it's very doubtful to me whether you really want to be flooding every MAC address to every switch in the unknown DA case or for, to support broadcast-based protocols. Plus, you're still faced with the basic problem of dynamic topology discovery mechanisms that whenever there is an event, this is another one of Igor's points, I feel like I'm just repeating his points here, that whenever there's a topology event, reconvergence is required, and switches can spend an enormous amount of CPU reconverging, and if they defer that work too long, <laughs> as Igor was saying, that's going to be quite an interesting uh, a disaster for the network operators, and none of this seems like it ought to be necessary. Um, so 
which approach do you think was going to scale better to try to get trill and flooding and so on to really scale to an, an, an environment with 2.4 million MAC addresses or a central controller? So I think uh, the, we're at a very interesting uh, crossroads here in our industry. Um, so that was actually all I had. So I will turn some time over to the next gentleman here. Thank you very much.